How you doing? It's Jared. Max Ace Knives, right? I'm starting to get a whole bunch of them. This is a Max Ace Banshee. I picked this one up, or I got that one after I picked this one up. This is the first Max Ace Knife, uh, Max Ace Knife I bought. It's the Covenant, and I got this one just because it's got really good ratings out there or reviews out there. It's been kind of a, you know, people are a fan of it, so I decided to pick that one up. But when I did, I saw this thing in the store, right? It's a Max Ace Pelican. I kind of lost my mind, like, oh, I freaking need that thing. Went back a few days later, picked that one up. This is a Max Ace Goliath. This thing is, I mean, look at this thing. It's beautiful. It's elegant, but at the same time, it's freaking ridiculous. Like 4.3 inch blade, big old hunky knife. I just put a review up on that one. I really like that knife. But then there's this thing. I saw this on Instagram. This is a Max Ace Zerg, right? What's the name of it? Zerg. This thing is awesome. I saw, originally saw it on Instagram and kind of, I liked it. You know I mean, I looked at the photos. I looked at them multiple times, you know, it was, but it wasn't something I was like, oh, I'm going to buy that. You know, it wasn't something I was going to pick up. I'm going to be picking up a Max Ace Amber at some point as well, just because that is a knife that I am like, ooh, I'm going to buy that thing. That's something that I actually need. That wasn't my feeling with this, right? Until I was in the store and actually played with it. Until I held this thing, I freaking fell in love with this knife. I am still in love with this knife. Like, look at it. It just makes me giggle. This knife is so, it's so awesome. Just as, as crazy and as radical as it is, but yet all of this just crazy, you know, worn cliff and it's dropping. It's got this pistol grip. This thing is freaking excellent. It is excellent. It does have its problems, but it is an amazing knife for just utility work, overall use. I actually have fallen in love with EDCing this thing, carrying it around. It works well for basically any task that I have to do, as well as it's a great defensive knife. Just the pistol grip on this thing, the way it's got this large two finger choil in here. I'm not normally the biggest fan of that really big two finger finger choil but the way the, my fingers just kind of sit in here everything is chamfered everything is rounded so there's no hot spots even the jimping on the back here offers a little bit of grip but not you know what I mean it's not overly aggressive it doesn't eat into my fingers and so the way that this thing sits because you if you if I try to hold it like this and I try to hold it like a traditional knife you can see what happens to my hand you know what I mean it just it doesn't work and so you have to come onto the back of the handle you actually have to come all the way back here right and have most of the actual handle sticking out of the front of your hand but then it gives this kind of pistol grip aspect right it turns into a pistol grip form you know knife it's relatively popular a lot of people kind of prefer this shape of hand, knife handle right i'm not normally the biggest fan of it but this one definitely sold me and so it just sits right there you've got excellent stoppage protection you've got excellent retracting prote protection any sort of draw cut any sort of push cut that you have to do if you are going to stab something any sort of you know tight penetration and it's locked into my hand the way that this thing feels in a hammer grip actually carving wood holding it like this carving wood because that blade is actually orientated oriented you can see right here that blade is just it's just a tiny bit back it's just got a tiny bit little bit of curve back which actually works in any sort of really hard push cutting i have to do while i was carving a stick with this thing i actually carved a stick to flick other sticks off of the trail just narrow narrow down the tip so you can actually get underneath the other sticks and flip them right and this thing carves dead wood it carves hard wood really well it just the the actual the orientation of it in my hand the way that i actually i'm holding it here take a shot every time i say orientation you get drunk as Woo, by the end of this video right but as well there's no hot spots as far as in the palm of my hand because it's the most common spot right when you're doing anything really hard you're digging really hard into material the knife is coming back you've got all of that pressure coming back right there into the webbing between your thumb and your forefinger that's not the case with this knife well it is as far as the location of the pressure because it's i mean it's going to the same spot obviously you're still putting forward you know it's a lever right and you're putting leverage on one side and so it's all coming back right in right there into my hand but because the way that this thing is sitting just all the way in my palm it's almost it it's like it distributes the weight from this spot from the webbing of my hand to my entire palm you can see that there so when i push when i give any really hard pressure because of the way that my hand is actually counted off at an angle right it's at an angle from the blade itself it puts all of that pressure along this section, right? This section of the knife here, opposed from this section here. And so I can actually carve with this thing, do a really hard cut, really hard work for a long time, and it doesn't wear my hand out. Which, looking at this knife, 
Doesn't make sense. It's not something that I'm ever going to look at this thing and be like, oh, yeah, this is this is an excellent, that's going to be an excellent work knife. It's a great EDC knife. You know what I mean? It's not something that would ever pop into my head, but it actually is. I freaking love carrying this thing around. Once I actually learned how to open it, it was great. The problem with opening it is many people have probably already come up with the thumb stud. The thumb stud, the main real reason I think is just orientation from the thumb stud to the pivot. Because when I hold this knife right, when I pull this knife out of my pocket with if I hold it like much other knives, straight forward in my hand, right? Straight forward in my hand. Then when I push on that thumb stud, you can see I'm pushing directly into the pivot. I'm pushing it forward, right? Which just goes all of that pressure is pushing that way, right? It's actually pushing to close the knife. And so I can push as hard as I want, you know, in this direction here, and it's never going to open that knife. But if I or if I turn the knife just a little bit in my hand, I turn it just like that, so the, the forward pressure is actually going this way, it's going around the pivot, it actually opens the knife, right? It opens up every time. The detent is excellent, the de it works really well, the action is... Ah, bash thing into the table. The action is phenomenal in the spidey flick. You can see that the same thing with the spidey flick because there isn't any room between, well, it's not really the same thing, but it's a different problem. There isn't really any room between the scale and the thumb stud itself. And so I actually have to kind of bury my finger in there, right? I have to like jam it in between the lock bar and the, you know, the thumb stud itself to get that spidey flick. But because of where it is, right, again, because of just the orientation to the pivot itself, any sort of downward pressure makes this thing just fly out. And so once you, I actually learn how to do it, once I get that, once I actually got that down, this thing flies open. It really does. It comes open with some authority. You see that? You see it? I'm doing it again, right? It's because I'm sitting here talking. It it really does take a little bit of a uh, little bit of relearning in your hands to get this thing open and get actually get it out really quickly to use it in some sort of defensive scenario. Using it in the EDC that really doesn't matter. It's just a little bit frustrating and it kind of wears down on your finger. You'll bust your fingernail up, right? But I do definitely like the way that it locks up. I, it's heavy. This knife is a block of titanium. There's a lot of material here and you can definitely feel it. I'll put the actual specs down in the description. But you can see just the overall thickness of these things. There's no milling on the inside of this handle whatsoever and so I mean it is, well there's a little bit of milling but I'll get into what that's for. There's no skeletonizing on the inside of these handles. These are just solid slabs of titanium with titanium onlays. This is titanium onlay, inlay, whatever you kind of want to call that around both sides of the pivot here. And so it is just a whole lot of metal. There's just a whole lot of metal in this knife. And so it's a big, heavy chunk of, chunk of just metal, titanium and steel. And I actually really like that, but I can see it being kind of a negative with some people. The over, the, the, the excuse me, the actual lock bar, right, is an interesting because this isn't a frame lock. I don't, I mean, I think that design was the reason that it's not a frame lock. Because you can imagine if this was a singular piece of titanium that had been milled out of this frame here, it's not going to have a whole lot of rigidity. But the way that this inset frame lock here, this inset, yeah, it's an inset frame lock, right? It's not an inset liner lock. That's an inset frame lock, which is an interesting thing. But the way that it's oriented there, you can see it coming down. And actually, the screws are hidden. The actual mounting screws for the lock bar are hidden underneath the pocket clip, which is just an excellent touch. That's just an excellent aesthetic touch that they actually went as far to do that. But it's mounted, the way that that's mounted in there, I think actually gives a little bit more structural rigidity than actually if this thing was a frame lock. Look at this pocket clip. Where's the screws? How's that pocket clip mounted on there? The screw for this pocket clip is right there. You can see it? There's a screw for this pocket clip. So the only way that I can actually think that that thing is made, the way that it's actually done is dovetailed. It's been dovetailed into the scale here, or actually into the, the frame of the knife here. They slid it in and then put that screw in there just to hold it in place. So there's only one screw holding that thing in, and then it's just been dovetailed down actually Come on, focus back. Dovetailed actually into the frame there. And so that is an excellent design. That is just freaking cool these neat little things i didn't even realize when i bought it you know what i mean that was something i noticed sitting on the toilet a couple days later like holy crap this thing is excellent as well as the fact that the blade goes inside the backspacer you can see that because this is kind of kind of a standard backspacer and the fact that it's just holding the frame apart you can the way that it's actually done 
is its exterior, right? Because all of the backspacer is outside of the actual frame of the knife. So it's this U-shaped piece here that's just running in between these two scales. You can, if this thing will actually focus in for me, sorry about that. And so it's, I don't actually know what to call that. Hold on one second. Yeah, there was a knife out there that called that a, um, like a semi-integral or a kind, you know, like a half integral, you know, something like that. They were comparing this overall backspacer design to an integral. It's not. It really is just a traditional backspacer. This has nothing to do with an integral, but it's freaking awesome. I don't know what it does as far as structural stability. That's kind of just to be proven. I imagine it may be an actual improvement, but I love the way that it's executed in this overall knife design because it's the only way that it would work. You can see if there was a traditional backspacer, right? You've got a quarter inch backspacer, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch, go even thinner, you know, it'd probably be a quarter of an inch backspacer running in between these two scales, running in between the frame of this knife to separate it, right? This back, the blade, the way that this, the blade shape, this kind of crazy modified Warncliffe would actually collide with that backspacer. It would hit it, right? Because just how far it comes down into the frame of the knife. And so having that exterior backspacer on there, having that, ex having it milled out and kind of protruding from the frame of the knife, Knife like this is the only way that you can actually get that blade this blade shape specifically cupped inside of this handle and so it's just an excellent overall knife design this is an interesting thing this anodizing that they've done on this here it is anodized i mean it's blue anodized i don't know titanium slabs i don't quite know what the process was i imagine they put some kind of material on there let it dry it formed into these little crackly you know, crackly designs, and then they you know, left it on there, anodized it, and that way it left this design. They removed whatever that material was. I think that's probably how they did this. I don't know, but it's definitely cool. I like that, as well as the inlays onto the blade. I believe they're probably just held in by the, by that, yeah, thumb stud, if I can actually speak. I'm not sure. I don't know how many of these knives are made. You can see this one was number 70, M390, Weeby Knives on Pier 39 in San Francisco. Check them out on Instagram. Right now has, I don't know if they've actually still got it, but they did have number zero, 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 zero on the Max Ace Zerg. And that, it was kind of hard for me to decide which one I wanted. I went with this one just because I really liked the blue and just the, the overall design aspect of it. And then again, number 70 is a pretty cool number i definitely like that this is a surprising knife this knife has truly surprised me because i i didn't expect to like it nearly as much when i saw the photos of it and then when i got it in hand i liked it much more than i ever expected to like it and then once i bought it and once i actually owned it i used it and enjoy carrying and use it using it more than i actually ever expected and so this knife has just surprised me all over the place it really has, and I love being able to carry just this crazy looking thing around. As crazy and as just space age and all of the crazy angles and the amazing design, right? Check this out. I actually want to, before I leave here, right? You can see those two little nubs. Those two little nubs are the same size, right? Open the blade, those two little nubs, they line up. They're just about the same size until you, or, until you move the knife, until you orientate it. Aha, just like this, getting y'all drunk. They're not the same size. You can see that this side is actually taller. That little lump is taller. But from the side here, when you're just looking at this overall knife and profile, it looks like they're the same size, right? But they're not. That's excellent design. That's beautiful design and thought process going into the actual, you know, just design and manufacture of this thing. So I keep finding stuff like that. I've been walking around this knife for a few weeks now, and I still find little, little, Tiny things like that, the hidden screws, the way that this is done, the way that these inlays are actually inlaid around the lock around the lock bar here. You can actually see how thick that is and the, it slants down to meet that titanium. It's so it's basically perfectly mated there around the you know, around that actual lock bar to create this just overall effect. So I keep looking at this knife and I keep finding new stuff all the time. I really enjoy carrying it, but that's all I gotta say about this one. Max Ace Zerg. It's the Zerg. And how cool is it being able to say you keep carrying a Zerg? Zerg. That's it. Y'all have a good one.